Researchers in fields like biology, chemistry, physiology, and genetics have made great strides in their own fields in the past decades. Many times their findings resulted in important new drugs to treat life-threatening diseases. With a whole range of complex and difficult diseases like cancer, diabetes, and Alzheimer's still out there and still wreaking havoc, the University of Michigan decided that collaboration between scientists would be one of the key components to unlocking those complexities. Eight years after the founding of the Life Sciences Institute, the results look very promising. Nancy McCauley has the story. When the University of Michigan opened its Life Sciences Institute building in 2003, the plan was to usher in a new level of interdisciplinary effort. LSI Director Dr. Alan Saltiel explains the thinking behind this initiative. Normally we scientists kind of self-organize into cliques, but here we've actually looked for people who would rather hang out with people outside their field. Is that working? Are you finding people are anxious to bring you thoughts and ideas and try this? What we've tried to do is to build within the Institute these centers for collaboration. We call them collaboratories. These I are like collaborative that. laboratories. And so to try to get together chemists and biologists, for example, to really exploit the power for the biologists to exploit the power of chemistry to study biology and vice versa. In addition to attracting scientists who are interested in working together, the building itself makes its own contribution toward collegial cooperation. There are, in every floor, four labs, four really big labs that are actually connected to each other, both in this direction and in this direction. I can see all the way through. Yeah, this is the way that the labs were designed, that we have hallways that cut across so we can easily go from one lab to the other here or one lab to the other on this side also. Bringing together top faculty teams from science and medicine, the Life Sciences Institute boasts 28 world-class faculty among its 400 researchers. Some measures of its success can be seen in the more than $88 million in grants and an array of competitive awards. One senior faculty who appreciates the collaborative culture at LSI is Dr. Janet Smith. In my research program, I collaborate very closely with David Sherman, who's a colleague one floor up in the Life Sciences Institute. One of the things we're working on right now is uh, to learn the ways that microorganisms do some absolutely fascinating chemistry. And our hope is to, by discovering the proteins that do the chemical reactions um, and understanding how they function, to then re-engineer those pathways to make new drug compounds or drug lead compounds that can help us in the clinic later. Utilizing powerful computer graphics programs, Dr. Smith demonstrated a 3D view of a molecule which they discovered as a chemical activity, which also makes it applicable outside the realm of medicine, holding great promise in the production of biofuels. This is not a hydrocarbon, but any old hydrocarbon could go in there just fine. Which so is good the news. application of this is, is endless. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And you could go yeah. medical or you can go biofuel. That's right. Due to transformations in funding in the pharmaceutical industry, the Life Sciences Institute realized that some very promising research might languish for years before reaching the public in the form of life-saving drugs. We realized that we had a number of projects that were a little bit too late for the kind of funding that you get from the NIH but a little bit too early from the, for the funding that you get from the venture capital community. With this gap in funding and in the energy that it takes to get problems across this, pipe, across this pipeline of research, we call the valley of death, where projects just kind of fall into this abyss. And we had thought about this a lot and thought, what, wouldn't it be great if we could take kind of a venture capital approach to finding these projects and providing them not just with funding to get through this valley of death, but, but also with mentorship and with advice from people in the business community, especially in the life sciences community. And on this model, the LSI created the Innovation Partnership, which in its first year raised and awarded $635,000 to support four projects. Of the four, Dr. Alan Saltiel's Diabetes Project became a spin-off company, and the other three have made phenomenal progress in areas of neurodegenerative disease, bacterial infection, and cancer. Dr. Jason Geswicki has led a team researching Alzheimer's disease. How did you zero in on Alzheimer's? How did that happen? Uh, yeah, I was watching a program on PBS um, 
that described early onset Alzheimer's disease. And it moved me in a, in a way that made me decide, I want to use my background and my training in organic chemistry to go after that disease. Daddy, I don't want to lose this. Researchers have identified malfunctioning of proteins in the brain as the cause of Alzheimer's disease. And so in order for a protein to have function, you need to fold that protein into a well-defined three-dimensional structure. But this is not a folded protein. What you and I are doing is taking this misfolded protein very early after it forms, and we're getting rid of it. We're breaking it back up into individual amino acids and then using those to build new proteins. Dr. Geswicki's team searched for small molecules that stimulate the activity of a protein called HSP70, which prevents protein misfolding in brain cells. After screening thousands of potential compounds, the team identified two chemicals that bind to and regulate HSP70. We've taken those molecules and tested them in mice that have symptoms similar to Alzheimer's disease. And these molecules, fortunately, we got very lucky, these molecules do diminish the, the disease phenotypes in these animal models. Are you ready for human testing? Right now, as we speak, we're going through the battery of tests to make sure that these compounds will be safe to the best of our ability before we put them into people. And it is at this stage that the innovation partnership becomes critical, providing funds to pay for the extensive testing and expertise on how to commercialize a drug. So without the partnership, it may have, your research might have come to a conclusion. What would have happened was it would have stalled at determining whether or not it could be a drug. Uh, that part would have, would have been significantly slowed down if not stopped. As president of Asperian Therapeutics and a member of the LSI's Leadership Council, Roger Newton brings an extensive knowledge of the pharmaceutical industry to provide invaluable advice to scientific researchers like Jason Geswicki. One of the things I did is had, I had lunch out here with him and, and talked with him about some of the, the key aspects of, of building a relationship with a, a company but not telling them too much too soon, of, of making sure that um, He's approaching them in the right way for his own benefit and the benefit of his, uh, his research colleagues in the university. With the colleagues of the Life Sciences Institute all pulling for each other and the Innovation Partnership providing a leap over the research valley of death, the possibility of new life-saving drugs is moving closer to reality.